Ladies and gentlemen, Violet Games here. Before I get started on what this episode is and what I will be talking about, I first wanted to thank all you guys. Because we're about to break 500 fucking subs. That's a big deal to me. The fact that more than 200 people actually care, or even 100 people actually care about the shit that I have to post is like so fucking, like, I don't know, honorable or honoring to know that you guys are enjoying the content and you're supporting the content and, you know, overall the, the feedback that I've gotten from this channel, period, has been so overwhelmingly positive, more so than really anything in my life, so I just wanted to thank you guys up front, you know, get my ass kissing in before I go ahead and start the rest of this episode. Today I'm going to be talking about loving your haters, um... The, the state of the console port of this game, and also um, <clears throat> um, the PTR um, updates that we recently got. I almost fucking forgot, if you can believe it. And then I'm going to finish up by talking about Torbjorn, because I think Torbjorn's kind of in a bad state right now. So, let's get started on loving your haters. I think that it's important in life to keep this little... Um, ideal that I have in mind if you struggle with any type of criticism throughout your life regardless of what you're going through it's to love your haters and why should you love your haters you should love your haters because they're going to give you a perspective that no one else on the planet is going to give you guys your mom isn't going to tell you oh you walk funny or your your, your voice sounds funny or something like that your haters are going to be more honest about it because they don't worry about your feelings so you can actually derive a lot of cre or a lot of constructive feedback from your haters because they're going to tell you things that your fans aren't going to tell you or maybe my subs are going to tell me because they want to be polite or whatever. I mean, one <clears throat> positive thing for this channel specifically that I could draw out was if people didn't react so negatively to my Overwatch 7 tips guide, the intro on that one, I probably would have never changed it and it never would have gotten fixed. But because basically to this day I still get wailed on for it, you know, that was a positive change that I made on my channel and now I'm making sure I like double check everything and make sure everything's fine. You know, that, that feedback though it was overwhelming like, ah, like, oh, this intro's cancer, I still took it with a grain of salt and it made a positive change. And I don't mind if people like dislike my channel. I think that the, they deserve to have a voice too if something I've done in the video like displeases them. By all means, I want you guys to tell me like what criticisms you have of my content. Um, but preferably make sure there's something constructive left in there. Because if you're just typing things like, oh you're gay or oh you f go fucking kill yourself, that I can't really take anything from that. I mean I could kill myself, but you know, I don't think my family would be too happy about that or my friends for that matter. So. Yeah, that's, I'm not going to follow through with that advice. That's what I mean, take it with a grain of salt. And also understand your self-worth. That kind of goes back to my Toxic Players video, but I'm not going to really get into that. That's not the, the major focus of the content. But yes, I think that you should love your haters because they're not going to give you a perspective, or they're going to give you... Um, a perspective that no one else in your life will and also they're gonna like toughen you up a little bit because being a little uh being exposed to negative people in my opinion can actually be very very useful especially if you learn from those types of people not necessarily how not to like emulate them or anything but you learn that people can be like this because let me spoil it for you guys if you haven't undergone this yet. There are people in that are going to appear in your life that just don't fucking like you for whatever reason. It could be the way that you walk. It could be the way you do your hair. It could be the way you form a sentence. Literally, people will hate you for fucking anything in this world. So, how you handle your haters is definitely um, important in my mind. So, I think I've rambled on long enough about that. I'm going to move on to the next topic, which is... Do you guys think, or do you guys get the feeling, because I get this feeling, that the, the console version of Overwatch is highly under-supported, just in terms of developer feedback, or, you know, developers showing an interest in us, um, and in general, the community that surrounds Overwatch in general seems to highly favor the PC version of the game, and this kind of confuses me strictly because I think the console version of Overwatch is phenomenal. And I have a few criticisms coming up here in a second, and before I lead into that, I want to start the preface like this. People who bought Overwatch on console bought the game for 60 bucks, 
and it was kind of a cash grab. And why was it kind of a cash grab? Because there was a $40 version available on PC. Because the issue was that people didn't like the fact that it was a multiplayer only experience for 60 bucks. So they offered two versions of the game, one being the Origins Edition that was $60, and one being the regular standard version that was worth $40. Now the value proposition of the standard version is way fucking better, and let me tell you why. Basically, none of the skins in the Origins Edition look good or anyone gives a shit about them. I never see anyone on PlayStation rocking the Morrison skin, rocking um, the post-Reaper um, Reyes or the pre-Reaper Reyes skin, like, almost ever. I barely see it. I think the skins don't look nearly as cool as the legendaries that already exist. So, the value proposition of the original version was... was um, far more appealing, especially because you could spend the other 20 bucks on fucking loot boxes if you want to, and potentially get a better skin than the one you got from Origins Edition. So, I'm kind of salty that we didn't get that option, especially because, you know, money doesn't fucking grow on trees, and Blizzard said that they were going to balance both ports, but really hasn't. There's only one example I can think of where Blizzard actually made a separate buffer nerf, and that was to Torbjorn, who I'm going to talk about a little bit later. And, and if, oh, let's top off this conversation, is that the YouTube community actually hasn't supported the console version of this game either. In fact, there are several YouTubers that I would go to for guides and builds and shit along that lines, and none of them, and, and even game players as well, none of them have gotten the console version of this game, even though that in the past that they would buy the console port, or the console version of, like, say, Call of Duty. Um, first things that come to mind are definitely Call of Duty people I used to watch, being Drifter and Daniel Cross. Neither of these guys bought the console version, and I don't feel like anyone fucking has, and it's, it's just so weird to me. Anyways, um, oh, another way to lead into that is if you guys are Overwatch console players who post content, by all means, put your link in the, um, the comments. And tell people to check them out if they're looking for gameplay. Tell them what you're good at or whatever. Give them a little preface. Tell them what you cover. And then, you know, give them that so that people have more references than just me when they're looking for gameplay. So, <clears throat> that about wraps up that. So, like, just to recap real quick. Do you guys think the console version's under-supported? You know, like, us not getting patches when we probably should. Us having to wait for a bunch of shit. Us, them, them not giving us, like, release dates on when we're getting the, um, patches and shit. Instead of just saying, oh, it'll be about a week, and then just getting it randomly. I'm not really a fan of that business market. Or, uh, of that market at all. And the fact that we paid 60 bucks for the game, I think we have, we damn right have the right to have a supported version of the game. Just saying. Alright, now I'm going to move on to the recent PTR updates. Uh, I did I did go to uh, another YouTuber's channel, Force Gaming, to basically get the rundown on what exactly everything meant, because last time I did one of these, I was slightly confused at the context of one of these. So I looked up another channel to kind of, you know, see what I'm doing. And I think a lot of you guys know who Force Gaming is at this point. So, what are... I'm just going to briefly summarize the buffs. I'm not going to read them word for word like I did last time. I'm just going to summarize the buff. So, the first buff has to deal with Soldier um, Soldier 76's burst fire capabilities have kind of been increased, meaning that it's easier for him to burst fire and do that effectively. I have no problem with this buff, especially from the console perspective, simply because we need help killing Pharah. Like, a lot of people who play on console can't really deal with Pharah that well. I think Soldier 76 is usually the go-to pick for that, as well as Roadhog. So having a character that can kind of use that burst fire to get long-range, like, shots off, very fucking moist. I do not hate the um, Soldier 76 buff. I don't think it's going to make him super overpowered. The only concern I have is that it's going to make um, sniping a pain in the dick, especially for Widowmaker because he's a very slow-moving target. If Soldier just puts up his little crosshair and starts spamming from the hip and just, like, like keeping his reticle small and using bursts, then he can kill you rather effectively, especially if he goes for the first burst being headshots. You know what I'm saying? So that's the only real genuine concern when it comes to... Soldier's um, Burst Fire buff, is what I'd call it. Now, the second change has me a tad salty, and not because of what it initially says. It's kind of tricky the way it's worded. Again, this is why I went to another channel to, like, double-check myself and have it explained. 
is that Hanzo's hitbox has been reduced by 33%, but it's still larger, and this is this is via what Force Gaming has said, but it's still larger than it was initially. That pisses me off royally. And why does this piss me off? Because the problem with Hanzo on console is that his hitbox is astronomically large to the point where he can hit people behind cover if they're trying to do a pop shoot duel. Like, for example, I do it with Widowmaker constantly. I'm trying to kill Hanzo, popping in and out of cover during recharges. Not only can Hanzo pop in and out of cover faster now, but he also has the capability of shooting a fucking Christmas tree the size of fucking Mars, I guess. Because I, his hitbox was already large. And I'm starting to raise my voice because I'm kind of pissed off. His hitbox is already large. He's the most abusable sniper in the game, and he's getting all of these buffs while Widowmaker isn't getting shit. Yeah, I'm a little pissed off. And... This is kind of why I was saying the console part of this game is unsupported because the bottom line is everyone on console is saying that Widowmaker needs a buff. Pretty much no one would deny that Widowmaker doesn't need some kind of help on console. Even the Widowmaker players who love playing her will even say things like, oh, I think her damage is fine, but her utilities and her kit is absolute garbage. So, I don't know what the fuck they're thinking with this Hanzo hitbox bullshit. I don't want it on console. I'm okay with the projectile speed increasing, but if you're not going to fix his fucking hitbox, then he's still going to be a cheap piece of shit. He's still going to spam down hallways and get random headshots. And the example that Forrest used was, oh, you're he's shooting at your tank and you just happen to walk by and die. That shit is going to like just increase now, I guess. And now Hanzo is going to be the, the linchpin of fucking sniping. I don't know why the fuck they did this. It makes no sense to me. Yes, I understand, people. I do know that Hanzo isn't very successful and competitive. I know this. I'm not ignorant to the fact. But the bottom line is I like sniping, and you have an overpowered sniper who's the cheesiest one of the two. With Widowmaker, you actually have to fucking aim because your hitbox is the size of a pebble. With Hanzo, you spam arrows because there's no reason not to. You're literally just playing the law of fucking averages when you're playing Hanzo when you're spamming your goddamn arrows. And if you have some degree of skill, it just makes it worse. <laughs> like, you have a d degree of skill of tracking his projectile, he just becomes even more of a fucking overpowered monster. So I have no idea what the fuck they're thinking. I have no clue. I don't know why they think buffing Hanzo is so pertinent over Widowmaker, but I believe it has something to do with the fact that PC Widowmaker isn't that bad because getting headshots isn't that hard on PC, comparatively. So... Those are my thoughts on the Hanzo bullshit. I'm not fucking happy about it. I understand Hanzo isn't overpowered, but I at least want him to be balanced. I don't want Hanzo to be removed from the game. You know, when I say hashtag fuck Spamzo and shit like that, it's more of a joke than anything. So try not to take it too seriously. I just want him to be balanced. That's all. That's all I want from fucking Hanzo at this point. I just want him to not be a, a complete cheap piece of shit. I want the high skill players to get in with Hanzo and be like, oh, I'm a really good Hanzo, and for me to just bow and respect that, as opposed to me being like, oh, what a fucking asshole, he just shot me with Scatter Arrow. Oh, what a fucking dick, he was aiming for my tank and hit me in the head. That's all I want. You know, God forbid I have a fucking negative opinion about a hero in this game, but whatever. Whatever. The salt is real. The salt is real. So let's talk about the third change, which is quick melee can't be interrupted by abilities, or uh, uh, vice versa to be honest, I think it was actually the opposite, which is you can't use um, quick melee to interrupt your abilities specifically. So if, if you're using ability, you can't cancel the animation with a quick melee. I think this is just something that Blizzard is fixing. I don't think they intended for melee cancels to be in the game at all, so... There you go. I don't really have a problem with it. Especially because you, it doesn't cancel abilities like Blink. Or any mobility uh, movements, except for Genji's combos. Which, again, I'm not too fully on board with either. I think his combo wasn't really OP or anything. At least from what I've experienced. I've never been derped on by a Genji so hard to where I was like, oh, that bitch needs a nerf. Except with Dragon Blade. That's the only thing I felt was kind of unbalanced with Genji, was Dragon Blade. So, quick melee can't interrupt abilities, but Tracer can still blink and melee, fine. Because, like, I, it was never really a part of my gameplay to animation cancel anyhow. I'm not going to cry over this. So, moving on to the final topic. Uh, and this is a console-specific topic. This does not apply to PC. Is where the fuck is Torbjorn, guys? I never see him anymore, and when I do, he gets fucking stomped the fuck out. 
And I have a theory behind this, but Torbjorn gets stomped the fuck out in almost every game I play, and I believe the reason is is because there was a period of time where people were, were collaborating for a Torbjorn nerf, but in that time, Blizzard reacted too slowly, and they actually, and all of us in the community, including myself, learned how to beat Torbjorn on his own fucking terms and adapt to him just like as if PC players were playing. So we all learned how to beat Torbjorn's ass, and we all learned comps around being um, Torbjorn's ass, and then they nerf him. So that's kind of like the cherry on top of his, like, fucking, like, shit sandwich of I'm fucked. Like, I do believe 100% that Torbjorn was nerfed into obscurity, and I kind of, like, thinking on it now, I completely disagree with this change, because, like, it's to the point, guys, where if Torbjorn's on my team on defense, not just offense, yeah, that's cringeworthy if someone picks a turret character on offense, but imagine having Torbjorn on defense and just being like, ugh, fucking Torbjorn. Because, like, to me, Torbjorn is nothing but a noob check now. Like, you literally have to be completely new to the game to let Torbjorn take advantage of you. He's a complete joke because of that turret nerf. And the turret nerf, I believe, was, like, minus 30% damage, which is pretty fucking significant, by the way. So, th those are definitely my thoughts on Torbjorn. Do you think Torbjorn has been nerfed to obscurity to where he's practically unusable now? Or do you think that he's still viable and I just haven't seen him used correctly in the past, like, since he was nerfed, to be honest? I believe that's right when, like, the Torbjorn train stopped. Right when he got that fucking nerf hammer, everyone stopped playing him. So, that about wraps it up for this video, guys. I appreciate you guys watching if you did if you want to see my beautiful face head over to player one in player two gaming or not gaming it used to be called gaming but it's player one in player two now it is a featured channel i believe you can find it by like browsing my channel and maybe there's like a featured one it'll just be a little cartoon picture of me and my sister that's how you'll know and we are trying to give that channel a facelift to what it is because it used to be a lot of things I, I'm sorry this is kind of a discussion within itself, but I have to explain the channel first, because, like, a lot of the content on that channel, guys, is garbage. I am well aware, but we are trying to, f to fix the content. We're hoping to invest into new stuff, but the general premise of what we're trying to do with it is it's basically a discussion platform between me and my sister where we talk about things in um, nerd culture, specifically. So, like, Suicide Squad, that was our most recent topic. Um, cosplaying, shit of that nature... And I also give updates from time to time about violent games on that channel as well. So definitely check that out if you want to see my beautiful face. If you don't care and you just want to see my Overwatch shit, fine. I'd love to keep you here. It's not a problem. But like, like always, guys, like, comment, subscribe. I most likely will respond to your comments. Though it's getting progressively more difficult, guys. We're about to break five fucking hundred subs. More fucking subs than fucking Subway. It's so exciting. I, I, I'm, like, enthralled by the idea of being able to do this and make some money. I'm not going to lie. And like I said, I've had a very positive experience with you guys. And I hope that... Uh, we can continue to help this channel grow and make console overwatch great again because console overwatch needs love god damn it peace out